Welcome to another Raid Shadow Legends video. Hope you guys are having an amazing Friday. Wish you guys good luck if you're summoning during 2x, 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 all of them at the same time. Hopefully you're gonna summon the best legendaries in the entire game. Now, in this video, guys, we're going to talk about the new mythical champion. As you may notice in the background, now this will be the new reward for the new clan boss. Which, of course, probably you already know which the new clan boss is. The Great Void, right? Now, I do have a question for you guys. Before we dive into checking the kit for the champion and kind of like to give you guys my take. Are you happy with the rewards for the Great Void? One mythical champion, then we're not getting books, we're not getting shards, we're not getting stones. We're getting new currencies that will add new power creep under the form of relics. Now, in order to basically forge relics, you need materials from the Great Void, right? At least the Chimera relics. So, let me know in the comments down below, what's your take on it? Are you happy with these rewards? Uh, personally, I'm not that happy. And I know that you guys would have loved to get shards, books, stones, everything that makes your blood flow in your veins when you're ready to click on that summoning button, right? I'm pretty convinced that that's something that the majority of the players would have loved more than uh, new relics, new currencies on top of the other 1 million currencies that we have in the game. We're leaving all the nonsense on the side, guys. Uh, I'm really curious to... Uh, hear your thoughts in the comments down below uh, are you satisfied with the rewards that they uh, have announced now the reason why i'm asking you guys personally i am not excited for this new mythical champion and i'm going to explain you why right so uh this is the first form we're gonna read the kit we're gonna go over to the second form but first i want to basically take this big stone of my soul and explain you okay so this champion as you guys may notice has a massive wall of text, but you can see a lot of green words in there, which they are debuffs, okay? Now, Plarium said that this is going to be an amazing, amazing champion for Arena. Maybe in 2020, he was going to be the GOAT, okay? The problem is that he has so many different debuffs, so many things that can polymorph him, that he becomes the biggest polymorph magnet in the entire game. On top of it, his kit. His forms are very, very confusing. One form tells you have this to get magic done. The other form tells you don't have that to get magic done with this form, right? And uh, it's polarizing, okay? That's, this is a polarized champion, in my opinion, because he doesn't know exactly what he wants. He doesn't know exactly what he needs to do either, okay? And on the first impression, this might sound good to you. Now, I've already been told when I said this champion looks mad. This champion doesn't look worth the effort on the new boss. 2024, 2025, by the time we're going to get this champion. And uh, while he does bring new mechanics, I just don't think he's going to be something that we're going to be like, wow, like a Marius, for example. Marius is absolutely amazing in all the content, right? And I have the expectation to get something similar from the most endgame content, but maybe... Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm a bit dumb and I have high expectations. Either way, I've been told that Scratch, by the time you get this champion, because it's going to be a long, long time, Polymorph might change. Ha 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 ha, with a cheeky smile. Well, I'm not going to hold my breath on that, to be honest with you guys, because I might die by the time that happens. And uh, I actually love living, you know? And uh, we've heard promises like this before. Maybe a new hound will come to join the fusion champion. Looking at the time, it's been six, seven months and I'm still not seeing that hound. So definitely do not hold your breath, guys. But leaving all this on the side. So we have uh, Ambrys the Anomaly. Kit-wise, uh, lots of tags. Design-wise, he looks pretty good. Not my most favorite mythical champion, but he doesn't look bad either. So starting with the very first skill, guys. Fatted Glaive. Attacks all enemies, destroys each target's max HP by 3%, stacking up to 30%. Also, increases the duration of one random debuff on all enemies by one turn. This effect cannot be resisted if enemies have any necrosis stacks. Now, I forgot to mention, he is a Spirit Divinity Champion. As I mentioned in the previous video, 100% is going to be a Knight Revenant. And he is a support on this form, okay? 
So basically, uh, you're going to get to find out in a second what necrosis means, and uh, you're going to understand it a bit better. But right here, increases the duration of a random debuff on all enemies. Big deal. Wow. My god. Then you have the Void Stair skill, which is the A2 on a 4 turn cooldown if you fully book the champion. Places a True Fear debuff on all enemies for 1 turn. And a Decrease Attack debuff on all enemies for 2 turns. These effects cannot be resisted if enemies have any Necrosis stacks. Then grants an extra turn. Which sounds pretty good, right? You're gaining an extra turn. But we're talking about fear and we're talking about decrease attack. Then, moving over to the A3, the Unmaking. This one will be on a 5 turn cooldown, fully booked on a 4 turn cooldown. Attacks all enemies. Removes any stone skin buffs and replaces them with true fear debuffs. Block debuffs buffs will be replaced with block buffs debuffs. Now I know what you cheeky, cheeky guys are saying right there. Scratch, are you stupid? Can't you see that this is the only champion in the game that can actually remove stone skin? Well, let me just tell you something, guys. Uh, it might say that he removes stone skin, but that 50-50% chance is still there. This is not 100% chance to remove stone skin. It just has 100% chance to remove a buff. But then stone skin comes in and smacks him in the head with a 50-50 chance, throws the dice, and is asking him, hmm, on what are you gambling? On number two or on number three? Well, if you gamble on two, I'm stone skin, I gamble on three and I won. You're not going to remove me. So he cannot remove stone skin 100%. That 50-50% mechanic that stone skin has as a set is still there. So don't get too excited, okay? Then it's nice, yes. You can replace the stone skin with fear. Then you can replace their immunity with block buffs. Absolutely amazing. Now what I'm curious to see as well is the order. If I'm now removing the stone skin and they still have the immunity, am I still going to replace that immunity? Or stone skin will abs instantly counter this right here because I cannot land debuffs on a stone skin, right? Only HP burn. Uh, I can land bombs. Uh, but I cannot land block buffs on stone skin. So what will happen in that case, right? Uh, that's another thing that I have in mind. Then also removes any buffs positively affecting stats and replaces them with their mirrored debuff equivalent. This is a great idea all around. So if they have uh, increased attack, continuous heal, strengthen, heal reduction, and weaken, unfortunately no increased defense uh, or stuff like that. But if they have these debuffs that are named right here, excluding the increased defense, will be basically modified to heal reduction, decrease attack, uh, weaken, and heal reduction, okay? So there are a lot of debuffs right there now i wish the increased defense was on the list as well because that's one of the most common buffs that we currently have in arena why not just make him do it to all of them you have increased accuracy let me give you decreased accuracy right so like that it can actually be of some form of a use uh it's not going to be very likely when you're gonna have somebody that's gonna bring you uh all of these buffs to a party right so i think it would have been a bit better not overpowered if you would have had increased defense uh, uh, as well as uh, in the kit, right? Then steals 5% of each target's turn meter for each buff converted into a debuff by this skill. Also, decreases the turn meter of all enemies by 20%. And if they have necrosis, these effects cannot be resisted, okay? So that sounds pretty good on paper as well. But you need necrosis. Now, let's get to that necrosis as well in a second. Then you have the Metamorph, which of course, you know the drill with the Metamorph. And then you have the passive, wrong, uh, Wrongful Existence. Whenever an enemy is killed, places one Necrosis stack on all other enemies. Necrosis stacks cannot be resisted or blocked. Necrosis stacks can only be removed by reviving dead allies. This effect does not work against bosses and their minions. If there are multiple champions, you guys know the drill, only one uh, effect will work. At the start and at the end of this champion's turn, instantly activates Necrosis stacks on all enemies. Now, the Necrosis stack will deal damage based on his own HP, 15% flat. Non-crit, it cannot be increased from anything else, right? I think we're going to see this uh, description on the second, uh, on the second form. Now, all this sounds pretty interesting. The Necrosis, yes, you take in a damage dealer, you may build the damage dealer faster than him, 
the damage dealer goes in, kills somebody, then his passive will put a, a necrosis stack on the enemies, and then he can use one of the skills, right? And uh, maybe do some magic. But honestly, there's so many buffs and debuffs and everything else that he does that he's going to be the biggest polymorph magnet in the game. Leaving that on the side, we do have a 35% uh, increased HP aura in uh, all battles, which is a nice, uh, a nice aura. Now, if we're going to go over to the next form, guys, which is this one right here, transforms into an HP-based form. Definitely not bad. Now, what I would have liked to see on this champion is ignore block damage, ignore unkillable, uh, ignore things that actually matters in the current meta, right? Uh, that's the most important thing. I don't care of transferring the continuous heal to heal reduction if I cannot ignore any of the relevant buffs in the meta, okay? So, with A1, a Maker's Blade attacks one enemy, places an extra hit if the target has any necrosis stacks, and places a block revive debuff if this attack kills an enemy. That's on the A1, he gains 30% more damage from there. It might be good, it might be bad, it's all about the multipliers. Now, I have no idea, I cannot comment on it. Uh, so far, 99% of the HP-based nukers that were released in the game, they were all a disappointment, okay? Very weak multipliers. Like, we really don't have many of them that are great. We have, uh, uh, we have Nice, we have uh, Alice, which his second form, that's the HP one, doesn't really do that much damage. You have Taras, uh, you have, of course, Narciss, and uh, Gizmak. But do we really have anyone else that's HP based that can smack? Frolny can smack now, but after the buff, right? Because initially, he really wasn't doing much. So hopefully, this won't be the case for this champion as well. Then you have the A2 on a 3-turn cooldown fully booked. Atomize attacks all enemies. Deals double damage to enemies whose accuracy is lower than this champion's accuracy. So, you're gonna have to basically be like, okay, am I giving this champion any accuracy? Am I not giving him any accuracy? That's why I mean it's polarizing, considering what kit he has uh, on the first form. Like, you kind of need accuracy if you're not killing somebody to really make the most out of it. And if they don't have necrosis stacks, his first form is useless. Because if you don't have accuracy, you're just not going to do nothing. So you need to have that stack on, right? And that stack uh, most likely disappears after you activate it. Because that's why it's called the stack. One tick, bang, is gone. You need to, uh, to reapply it again. So if you're not constantly killing enemies to put that necrosis stack on uh, the enemies... His first form without accuracy is useless, okay? So, you need to keep that in mind. But then the good part is that ignores 50% of each enemy's defense whose accuracy is equal to or higher than this champion's accuracy. So, that, again, why not combining this together? Deals double damage and ignores 50% of each enemy's defense if they have higher or lower accuracy. You know, I don't know, make it something like a bit different. So he can actually get the job done. Now, the thing is, if you're going versus a support champion, Sif is not going to have a higher accuracy than him, most likely. Uh, if you're going again uh, against the Marichka, she's not going to have higher accuracy than him, etc. Right? So this, uh, this is another thing to keep in mind. We're not sure how he will go versus champions like Galatir, for example, whose uh, resistance increases the accuracy through the passive. Is that something that he will take in consideration? He will ignore the defense because Galatir has high resistance and his passive is transforming that into accuracy or he's not, right? So this, these are more questions. Then you have your life is forfeit. Swaps HP with an enemy. If the target is a boss, fully restores this champion's destroys, uh, destroyed max HP and fully heals this champion instead. Each time this skill is uh, used, increases this champion's ignore defense effect by 10% while in their alternate form, stacking up to 50, then grants an extra turn. So this doesn't sound like a bad skill whatsoever. The thing is, it's not actually doing damage. You're just using this skill to restore your HP and increase your ignore defense effects. So you can actually ignore defense with the A1 and the A2. The thing is, you need to be in a engaged in a long fight to really make the most out of it. Yes, you can open with this skill uh, early on, but that's kind of like, why do you want to waste the skill if you're still on full HP and stuff? 
uh, yes, you will ignore 10% additional defense, and then you can move into the nuke uh, if he has power uh, power to nuke, right? Uh, I just I just feel like he's a bit too dependent of this, of that, do this, do that, and then you're gonna end up with nothing. Be and the reason why I'm saying it, the reason why you hear me talking like this is because uh, for the last five years we've got we've got plenty of champions like him that supposed to. My God, on paper they sounded so convincing, so interesting. But then, when you need to put them in practice, they just don't freaking work. And he sounds like one of those champions. I'm not ranting or anything like that. I'm just in a good mood today, so maybe I'm a bit more like uh, energetic, right? Then you have the metamorph, which uh, is what it is. Then we have the generator. When this champion dies, reflects damage equal to 50% of the fatal hit back to the attacker including any surplus damage. Now, probably the best thing in his entire kit is this part right here, the passive effect. So when you're going to have a Georgid, as an example, hitting 200k or so on this champion, on paper, it should reflect back 50%. 100k, even if his HP is 50k, it doesn't matter, right? So that should instantly kill the enemy nuker. But usually, reflect damage tends to really not work very effective uh, when their damage dealers are going versus reflect damage for whatever reason, it's almost like they mitigate the damage in a uh, some way, and uh, it's just not really doing what it should do. So hopefully this is not the case. Then whenever an enemy is killed, places one necrosis stack on all other enemies. Necrosis stacks cannot be resisted or blocked. Necrosis stacks can only be removed by reviving dead allies. This effect does not apply against bosses and their minions. So, this is still one thing that I haven't understood 100%. So, if I kill an enemy, uh, then the rest will get necrosis. And let's just say the next champion that takes a turn is going to be a reviver on the enemy team, which will revive the champion that I killed. Just because I'm they're reviving the champion, that means that necrosis is going to be basically depleted, is going to disappear, cleansed, just because that champion got revived. If that's the case, again, it just shows that it's not going to be very effective, because uh, champions take a lot of turns, revivers take a lot of turns, so they can quickly revive before a different champion gets to make in a big move or anything like that. So yes, you can go with A1, block the revive, then they cannot escape it. Uh, they can uh, they cannot get rid of the necrosis. It's still going to be there. But this is something that we're definitely going to have to test in five, six months from now when we're going to get a champion. Then the active effect. If this champion is about to get killed by a fatal hit, preempts that hit and instantly places a revive on that buff on them for one turn before the damage is taken. So it's very similar with what uh, uh, Godseeker and Iris passive does, right? Bang. You die, but you're going to come back to life instantly. So it's pretty much the same, which is a great passive, by the way. And you have an HP aura in all battles by 35%. Now I'm quickly going to try to look for the description of Necrosis, because I've seen it somewhere, and it seems like I cannot find it anywhere at the moment. Unless, unless I'm blind. Okay, there we go, there we go. So this was actually in text. So... When an enemy champion dies, a single necrosis stack is placed on all other uh, alive enemies. When another champion dies, an additional necrosis stack will be placed on all other alive enemies, and so on. So, for example, if you're going versus a team of four, and you're killing one champion, one stack is on. If you're killing a second champion, you're adding a second stack on. Now, what I'm not sure if is I'm killing two or three champions at the same time. Will I put one stack, or will I put three or two stacks, based on how many I'm killing in a single blow, right? Then, each necrosis stack deals damage equal to 5% of a champion's max HP at the beginning of their turn. Okay, so it's not his HP, actually. I remember that wrong. If your Duchess has one stack, that stack is going to deal 5% damage based on her HP, from what I'm, uh, from what I'm seeing right here. Then, for example, if a champion has three necrosis stacks, damage equal to 15% of their max HP will be dealt to them at the beginning of their turn. So, 
I don't know. Necrosis doesn't sound that great to me. It doesn't work on bosses. It only works on champions. So if a 100k HP CP will have a stack, he's going to get a 5k damage. So that's my opinion on the new champion. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Personally, I really don't think this champion is enough. I really don't think this champion is worthy as being called as the most endgame uh, reward in the entire game. But that's just me. And I haven't played the champion yet. I've just read the kit. And I've thought about all of the scenarios. And uh, basically, it doesn't even remove the stone skin 100%. It's still a 50-50 chance. Which is a smack in the face. Is this enough for you guys? Or is not? Let me know in the comments down below. As usual, I appreciate all of you guys watching. If you enjoyed the content, smash a like, subscribe. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.